Hey, I'm Jay Frechette, and you're watching The Bulletin. This week, the latest on Halo Esports and the Halo Championship Series, executive producer Josh Holmes gives us some info on the Halo 5 Guardians multiplayer beta, and we look at Halo Channel's second story features for Halo Nightfall. This week's content update to Halo The Master Chief Collection address issues that many of you have reported, including issues with matchmaking, custom games, some game-specific items, and stability across the board. While this update contains a variety of improvements, we know that some players are still seeing issues in-game and we're committed to improving the experience with additional content updates in the near future. As ever, for the latest info, make sure to follow at Halo on Twitter. And now, for this week's recap of the Halo Championship Series, let's check in with 343's Community Manager, Bravo. This weekend, $15,000 is on the line and teams are competing for a huge 3,000 HCS points for first place. Week one has come to a close and nearly 200 teams competed for the top spot in the first online tournament. We saw some incredibly close matches between CLG and Evil Geniuses, as well as Straight Ribbon versus Optic Gaming, and in the end, Evil Geniuses came out on top, defeating Believe the Hype 3-0 in the finals. Along with their cash prize, they took home 550 HCS points, and they now have the top spot on the HCS Season 1 leaderboard. Let's take a look at the standings as of this week. We've got EG at the top of the leaderboard, Believe the Hype in second, and Fatal Ambition, made up of Klein, RC, Siege, and Spartan the Dog, coming out of nowhere to take the third place spot. Other notable top eight finishers include Straight Rippin and Optic Gaming. Be sure to look out for all of these teams at this weekend's tournament, which is the first HCS sanctioned LAN event. Let's now take a look at the point breakdown. There are four tournament tiers within the HCS, Online, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. These tiers depend on the amount of cash that's on the line for the teams competing. This weekend's tournament is classified as a Platinum event, and we've got several top teams in attendance. We hope you're enjoying the action so far, and if you'd like to register for the next online tournament on December 14th, head to the HCS landing page and register with ESL. Be sure to come back next week to get the latest on the Halo Championship Series. Just last month at Halo Fest, we finally let you all see for the first time a small piece of our multiplayer experience for Halo 5 Guardians and gave you a bunch of new information to take in. This week I caught up with Halo 5's executive producer Josh Holmes to recap what you should expect to see in the beta which drops December 29th. This was one of the first times Halo 5 Guardians multiplayer was in the wild. Yeah. You actually were watching people outside the studio finally playing the game for the first time. Yeah. It was interesting because people would start playing and we'd notice like the first game that they would play, they would kind of play it very traditional Halo. And then they'd just start to layer in, you know, maybe one new ability at a time. Like you'd see the first time someone pulled off a ground pound. Mm -hmm. and then other people would be like, oh, wait, wait a second, how do I do that? And then they'd start to pick it up and, and bring it into their repertoire. And so over the course of several matches, you'd see this depth kind of emerge and that was really great to see because that's kind of what we had hoped and how we'd designed the game is, is to have those different layers. Another thing we'll be introducing uh, a version of our spectator mode that's going to have as yeah. well. Yeah, spectator mode is huge um, and basically what you'll be able to do in the beta is uh, any of your friends that are online you can go and spectate on their games and there'll be a slight delay so you can't sort of live spectate second to second and use that for nefarious purposes sure, to sure. cheat. Um, but you can then go and look at that game and you can view it from multiple different perspectives. It's essentially like a, like a save film that's running off of the dedicated server. And it's gonna be great in the hands of, of casters and streamers and, and hopefully uh, people will really enjoy it. And then, uh, you know, I know we've talked about this before, but we've thrown a lot of information at fans. What's the, the, the spectrum there of what we can expect in the beta? So the beta goes live on December 29th. It runs for three weeks through January 18th. Um, there are seven maps and three modes that will be featured in the beta. Um, something that we're doing a little differently with this beta is we actually have some interactive components that fans will be able to vote on for weeks two and three. So in week two, we're going to be asking fans to vote on uh, a power weapon that will be placed in one of the maps. And then uh, in the third week, we'll actually have them voting between two different maps that they'll be able to play. Definitely. We appreciate your time. And you guys will be playing it very soon. Each week of the beta, we'll be introducing new maps and modes for a total of three modes and seven maps over three weeks. I can't wait to play with everyone, and as a bonus, we put together an exclusive clip showing off the awesome new Spartan abilities and the amazing revamped sound that 343's audio team has been putting their heart and soul into. You'll want to turn this next part up. Double kill. Kill 
killing spree. You may not know this, but we offer some pretty awesome bonus content here on the Halo channel. In fact, when you watch Nightfall, you're able to unlock second stories for each episode. These are additional scenes and backstory that provide more context to the characters and worlds of Halo Nightfall. Actually, let's just check one out now. Listen, Fixer. Let me be honest with you. There's something about your query that's a little unnerving. The parameters you've depicted are obviously unique. But they vaguely resemble something I worked on a few years back. And maybe that's why you came to me. Checking power. Set only data encryption scheme. Recognized. Broadcast resumed. Under the UNSC scout review. Onboard artificial intelligence. From Dr. Madeline Tress, Operational Attaché for Astrophysical Phenomena. This message has been encoded pursuant to Naval Intelligence Statutes. Repeating transmission location and status report. Atmospheric pressure is Earth alone. This is for only eyes only with Alpha Delta clearance. Violations of this confidentiality is considered an act of treason against the Unified Earth Government. It is punishable by death. Reporting from surviving fragment of the unidentified alien artifact, identified as Halo. Fixer, I'm sending the formal report now, but I thought I'd brief you on this channel as well. The specific scenario you outlined in your report was a planetary framework we've catalogued as Type R3. Initial deployment was 500 kilometers downstream from the crash site. Generally, R3 sites are of little value to the UEG. They're usually barren and uninhabited, apart from low-level extremophilic corals and mosses. Irregular orbits and rotations, a close proximity to stars and other volatile planetary masses, and a litany of other issues. In short, R3 sites are not conducive to emergent life. There are, however, exceptions. Atmosphere is being held close to the artifact surface by field generated gravity. Our relay drones and surveying teams have found at least five different examples in which substantial flora and fauna have maintained unexpected stasis despite dramatically challenging contexts. These anomalies defy our current understanding of abiogenesis. Artifact surface is suppressing any associated electromagnetic fluctuation from beneath terraformed surface. Some of our drones tracked unqualified heat signatures buried far below the surface of the ring. We sent scanners in there, but the results were inconclusive. We do know, however, that the heat was organic in nature and not the same distribution as the flood. Whatever it was, it was widespread. We scanning the collection now reading significant biomass and organic activity immediately beneath this unit. We've since learned that the halo rings hosted many specimens of fauna all brought from other worlds. What were these specific ones? And how did they survive the destruction of the ring? But given your scenario, it's extremely unlikely that anything could have survived those conditions. However, if it did, if it somehow found a way, the question you need to ask is why? Why did Halo's architects keep this thing buried and locked away? Why would you bury something? Cool stuff. After you've unlocked a second story, you can access it from the Nightfall episode data screen. Now, the Halo universe is massive. Over the last 12 years, we've been introduced to dozens of characters, worlds, and stories that, even for devout Halo fans, can be a bit overwhelming. Luckily, you can get caught up on many topics by watching the Halo 101 series in the Learn section of the Halo channel. Also, I've been learning quite a bit from the Pro Tips videos in the Competitive section. I'm trying to master the classic Halo 2 trick jumps on Lockout and getting my timing right on the BXR combo. If you're looking to get an extra edge, I recommend checking these out. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next Friday on The Bulletin. Yeah.